Hello everybody, so it's been a while since I've been posting a lot of content. I've not been churning out videos very fast lately, um, mainly because I've just been so busy. But I have been working on a new series and I'll be tackling the issue of um, predestination versus free will. This is obviously a very controversial subject. Um, it can wind a lot of people up the wrong way sometimes. And uh, obviously there's been a lot of arguments over the last year and a half between some of the free will leaning free grace positions and uh, sovereign uh, grace positions. So I normally, I know I normally do videos where I present slides and it's more of a presentation style because I like to be fairly careful about what I'm proving. I like to show things, but um, I'm trying a slightly alternative format for this series. I want to do a bit more of a laid back approach and maybe it's not so much me presenting as it is me thinking out loudly, I guess. Um, so I hope that doesn't bother people. I know sometimes some of you would prefer the slides and it makes it a bit more straightforward and easy. But the thing is, it does take quite a long time to uh, work on the slides. I can't really express how long it takes and I've just been so busy with my job and everything. But also, because I work with computers and then I come home and most of my hobbies are on a computer and this channel contents on the computer, I spend far too much time hunched over really. Uh, you know, I don't spend enough time sort of getting out of, of the chair and uh, doing something that's not on a computer. So um, I've been taking notes instead on a notepad and sort of thinking the subjects through. So I have thought about what I'm going to say, but it just won't be on slides because at least on a notepad, I can work on the series when you know, I'm out somewhere or I've gone for a walk or I'm just away from my desk for whatever reason or I'm on my lunch break at work or whatever it might be. So this is sort of an experiment just to see how this goes. Um, I'm not using a headset, I've just got my phone there. So I'm hoping that it picks up the audio. When I've tested it, it seems to pick up the audio better without a headset. So uh, we're going to see how we go. Um, I'm not in the woods, but I found a quiet spot in a park and I'm hopefully in an area on a hill so I'm away from anybody bothering me and hopefully the traffic's too far in a distance because I don't want the video to have too much annoying background noise I want to I want people to be able to hear what what I'm talking about so uh, you know this is just kind of I just thought I'd try this out just to see what people thought of this alternative format and especially now that it's getting summer I actually want to spend a bit more time outside and not waste it which it's still not very hot at the moment it's only about 12 degrees Celsius uh, which is probably about 50 something degrees Fahrenheit if you're American, which isn't great now that the days are longer, you'd hope it would be a bit hotter, but that's just England, that's just what it's like. So uh, I'm just grateful that we're having a sunny day today without too much rain. So uh, also as well, perhaps the reason I'm not really doing slides and I'm trying a bit more of a laid back approach with this particular series is that the whole issue of predestination and free will is not something that I'm very dogmatic about it's not something that i want to get into fights with people over it's not some you know i'm not going to be doing videos against so and so said this about it and so and so said that about it it's not as much of a hill that i want to die on as other people that are out there and i understand some of the frustrations that they have when talking about this topic so you know it's something that i'll probably make enemies in this series or people that have watched a lot of my content up to now may change their mind after this series because it, it really is something that really can rub people the wrong way even if you're not intending to um but that's just the way that it is you know some people think oh you just sound like a calvinist or you just sound like whatever or you're you know whatever it might be so we'll see how we go so i have uh I, this won't be totally unscripted i have prepared notes to talk about each subject so in this one this is sort of an introduction to the series and an introduction as to why it's a bit different from most of my uh, content. So, predestination versus free will. What is it all about? Okay, so a lot of what we fight against when we're tackling work salvation and things like that and the repentance issue is that we're often fighting hard against a fuzzy grey area. Okay, so, you know, this grey bit of not saved by works, but true faith produces works, Maybe you're saved, maybe you're not. Hard to tell if you look warm. Is it turned from all known sins? You know, is it turned from willful sins? Is it sorry for your sins? Which is it? You know, this fuzzy grey area, how many works? We, we never really know. And what's truly fascinating about this particular topic is that actually Christians 
both in our camp and outside of our sort of circles are very um, polarised actually about this particular issue. You know, it's rather like American left-right politics. They kind of expect you to be one or the other on both extremes with, with no middle ground. And so bizarrely, I don't really find myself fitting into the far side of either. So that's maybe just an unusuality on my part. I don't find this as central or as much of a dividing issue as many Christians do, which is perhaps why I haven't managed to talk about it earlier on my channel. And a few people have asked me questions and had a couple of problems with me in the comments. But uh, yeah, it's just because it's not as central for me. You know, I've got bigger fish to fry, I guess. But it's not that I'm against talking about it. It's just not a central issue for me. So the polarisation manifests itself in two primary schools of thought. Okay, so these are typically named Arminianism and uh, Calvinism. But, but those terms, they're not very good terms, actually, because they're very Protestant terms. Um, and that excludes... Christians outside of Protestantism, which I would include myself really, I'm not a Protestant, but that's another topic for another day, uh, that we may have strong views about free will or election, but we're not Protestant. So broadly speaking, instead of calling it Calvinism, Calvinism and Arminianism, let's call it free will and uh, what you might call sovereign election. Okay, so, or as I like to call them, and this is not meant to offend anybody, it's just a bit of a jokey term, but the free will Freddies and the chosen Charlies, that's what I like to call them, just, just for a bit of a mild-hearted joke. So, free will Freddy says that man chooses to believe the gospel, and it's entirely of his own free will volition. And uh, everyone has a fair and equal chance to accept or reject the gospel. Now, chosen Charlie, on the other hand, says that man is so wicked that he can only reject God. And so the only way he can believe the gospel is if God chose him and draws him towards the light, as it were. So within these polarised debates, there are various diametrically opposed arguments. So Free Will Freddy says that Jesus died for everybody. Chosen Charlie says that Jesus died only for the elect. Free Will Freddy says that God's will is for everyone to be saved. God doesn't get everything that he wants. Whereas Chosen Charlie says that God's will is only for the chosen to be saved or the elect to be saved, and God will always get what he wants. And this debate raises all kinds of questions. So does God's will always happen or doesn't it always happen? Is Jesus the saviour of every man or only the believer? Uh, every man obviously meaning every single person. Does anybody seek after God at all or nobody at all? And um, of course, is God the author of evil is another interesting question. So I will hopefully uh, go into these more detail in separate videos. Obviously, I can't answer them all in one. Now, it's fair to say that most of Christendom holds to the uh, free will position. So your Catholics, your JWs, your Pentecostals, your Methodists, etc. And in fact, free will is very integral to the doctrine of conditional security, that one, this idea that one can lose their salvation. Free will is, is used as a built-in argument for that. So the largest group of Christians, that, on the other hand, we might call that the sovereign election side, tend to be your Calvinists and the, the Reformed theology sort of groups. However, within free grace, there is also a subsect, if you like, but we'll say it's a subsect, called Sovereign Grace, where they, they still hold like we do that salvation is without works and works don't prove you're saved or, you know, faith doesn't have to have works with it necessarily. So they'll even reject that aspect of Reformed theology. But they, they still hold to sovereign election ideas that, that God has to choose people for salvation. It can't happen of their own free will without that, that process taking place. So many free will free graces have accused sovereign graces of being Calvinist basically but sovereign graces have also made videos accusing free will holders of preaching a false gospel also or adding free will to the gospel so if we put them on a scale okay and let's let's call free will the far left position I think this is prompt my right hand but it should hopefully be on the left side for you when it when the camera flips it so let's call it the far left position is free will 
and then let's call sovereign race the far right position and this has got nothing to do with politics okay so on the far left you have your craig jackson's your david benjamin's jack smack and basically most the free greats and then on the right you've got mainly truth speller and destroying the works of the devil however these are not the only sovereign graces that are out there there are other channels and great men of god actually who were not part of these arguments and the mudslinging that's going around or that's been going around um such as ronald tabor uh, scott price but they may not be very well known you may have not even heard of those guys or they may not have a lot of mutual subscribers with my channel so a big question that some of you will be wondering then is what are you no nonsense christianity what is your position you know we saw that your second documentary included clips of greg jackson and jack smack but then also truth speller and destroying the works of the devil and those two sides have been completely butting heads against each other well before i answer where i fit on this scale um let me explain why i i won't anathematize either side of this debate and i don't want this i don't want to be part of the the sort of mudslinging that's been going on really is that the debate about free will and sovereign election doesn't really answer the question says what must i do to be saved because the answer is still the same right it's believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved that's the answer is the same whether you hold to free will or you hold to sovereign grace the, the question the only question that can really be answered by this debate is a question that nobody in the bible really asked directly um, why does one person believe and another does not? That, that's all it can, can really attempt to solve. So whether a person believes because they chose to believe or because God chose them to believe doesn't change the fact, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord, right? But obviously we know that most people won't believe. And so then we, we explore the reasons why they won't believe and hopefully answer that in a way which doesn't nullify the grace of god and doesn't over exalt those of us who do believe okay so for example um i i don't like to say that they don't believe because they're too prideful to believe because then it kind of makes it look like i was less prideful than they were and so that's why i'm going to heaven and then that is prideful by definition right hopefully you can see what i'm getting at there you know there was nothing good about me there was no humility uh, in me that warranted me being saved because salvation is not of yourselves right you know ephesians it's not even just not of works it's not even of yourselves ephesians tells us okay now chosen charlie says that if free will freddy chose to believe then he contributed towards his salvation by making right choices and being smart enough to make the right decisions in life compared to his neighbor who made the wrong decision so it it seems prideful from chosen charlie's point of view but from free will freddy's point of view he would simply say that his intelligence or his good decision making ability had nothing to do with it he was just simply persuaded and, and being persuaded is a, a biblical term okay and on the other hand he might say that chosen charlie is the one who's being prideful because he thinks that he's so special that god would arbitrarily choose him and not somebody else so you can see why this is such a polarized debate and how people absolutely wage war with each other on this and so going back to what i said earlier people will wonder what is my position what is the no nonsense christianity position on this issue if i'm not totally free will but i'm not totally sovereign grace where would i place myself so if you remember earlier i mentioned the scale right you've got free will on the far left and sovereign grace on the far right so i would place myself i guess at the center right if that makes sense so predestination leaning but not right on the far end of sovereign grace because i don't necessarily agree with all of their talking points either and i'm not against the idea that man has a will and man is able to make or seemingly make a choice i think it's just sticking the word free in front of it when really he is to some extent in bondage he is in darkness to some extent so i don't have a problem with the will and the choice it's just sticking the word free in front of it and giving it too much credence i guess it is my sort of problem so 
if we take the two words, free will and predestination, or in, instead of predestination, you could also use the word election, I suppose. Both free will and predestination are biblical concepts. I can find both words in the Bible, right? But if you look at how those words are used, free will is almost exclusively, with maybe one or two exceptions, used to describe the Old Testament sacrifices that were over and above the, the mandatory sacrifices, okay? Whereas predestination, on the other hand, is exclusively tied to our salvation and our eternal purpose and, and the very reason why we're saved, okay? So that makes me suspicious somewhat of free will. Not, not the people, just the position. Because if Christ is my mandatory sacrifice, I don't really want to risk adding my optional sacrifice or my free will offering, as it were, on top of Christ's sacrifice when, when salvation is entirely by grace. Okay. Now, it's fair to say that I made some stupid decisions when I got saved, before, well, before I was saved even. I wasn't the brightest tool in the shed. Um, I made a lot of stupid choices in terms of my career, all lack thereof, and education, all lack thereof. So to think that out of all the Christian versions of the gospel out there, using that term very loosely, that I chose the right one is perhaps giving me more credit than I deserve. Now, I could sit here and give my testimony about how I um, you know, came to the faith and this issue was upsetting me and I looked this up online and that and the other, but ultimately... I only did those things because of a series of circumstances that came upon me which weren't entirely my choice. And if I hadn't faced those circumstances, I, I might have actually not believed the gospel if I'd not been through that. So, in fact, it, it's it's rather like the story of the prodigal son in that regard. If, if the son hadn't ended up penniless and feeding pigs, if his life could have carried on the way it was going without changing. He, he might have not actually come back to the Father when you think about it that way. So to an extent, it, 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 I mean, I'm not again saying he chose to go back so much, but it was his circumstances that drove him back to his Father. But in a way, in a manner of speaking, he was already the Father's son to begin with in the first place, technically speaking. Okay, so I don't really like the terminology that I chose to believe but I also I don't like the terminology that I'm being forced to believe either I think both of those are very un, unfair terms I, I would just simply say I'm compelled to believe persuaded I have no idea why that idiot over there doesn't choose it but there you go that's just where we are I, I have no idea and I don't even know why I believe it sometimes reason has got nothing to do with it now I do agree that we make choices and to an extent you could even say that to believe or not believe is a choice but to understand choice you have to understand the nature of the thing that's making the choice so let's take this statement i'm sorry this is a bit graphic but it's from the bible it's a statement where jesus says a dog returns to its vomit okay now as a human being i'm disgusted by that okay now if i really wanted to taking the statement literally i could start you know, i could induce vomiting pick out bits of my breakfast you know collect it all and then try eating it again but without a gun to my head forcing me to do that it's fair to say i'm probably not going to do that because in case it may shock some of you i am a human being not a dog okay i'm made in the image of god so you know a dog may choose things i may choose things but i'm not a dog so i choose different things than, than a dog would choose to do by that same token, though, I, I never actually asked to be human, right? I, I wasn't given the option of being a dog. There was no interview panel where God says, all right, we've got a series of species here. You know, which one do you fancy? Take your pick. Only one of them's got eternal life and eternal damnation, so choose carefully. Um, my, my human nature was, technically speaking, thrust upon me, whether I like it or not, okay? I was born in sin, whether I like it or not. I was born in Adam, whether I like it or not. So being born in sin, I made the choices of a sinner, right? I chose to lust after women because it was in my nature to do that. 
I made the free will decision to get drunk and party with my sodomite friends because it was in my nature to do that, okay? But then when Jesus says, you must be born again, well, given that I didn't choose to be born the first time, I would be a little bit confused then as to why I'm then choosing to be born a second time. I'm sure someone in the comments will explain it to me, but I, I don't really get how being born again works as an illustration, okay, if it just comes back to choice. Now, I got saved because I was really confused about the repentance issue, so I looked it up on YouTube, and despite the thousands of videos out there of all these Christians telling me that it means turn from sin, the first video I actually found was Stephen Anderson showing where God repented and where man repented of non-sin issues and how modern Bibles remove so many instances of repentance. Now, prior to that sermon, because I know a lot of people have a problem with it, and I understand that, but prior to that sermon, I spent my whole Christian journey confused and, and wondering not having any clear idea how to get to heaven despite hours and hours of preaching and months of going to church and listening to other Christians in house group and sermons online. You know, none of that made it clear to me after hours and hours and hours. And yet this one 40 odd minute sermon changed my life. It was like a light bulb. 30 beautiful watts came on. The Lord said, let there be light. Amen. Okay. You know, in an instant, it's great. And so if anyone wonders, that's why I've explained the repentance issue ad nauseum on my channel and why I have actually featured Anderson's sermon in my documentaries, even though a lot of people do have a problem with him because, you know, even if he has been a bit of a, a douche sometimes, that sermon was always really close to my heart and I'm very grateful for that. Now, on the other hand, there are a lot of Christians out there who have looked at my channel and seen my documentaries showing them all of this same stuff. They'll, they'll see me showing them how God repented, how the Greek proves that it doesn't always mean turn from sin, and how all these passages are about Jesus, not about you. But then these same Christians are still going to walk away from all of that, saying, no, it still means turn from your sin. Right? Now, I can show them seven ways until Sunday. I can show them their idols like Ray Comfort sinning, but they'll just make excuses and say, no, he's a godly man. Uh, you know, I, and I have people on, who don't even do any teaching or gospel content on their own YouTube channel coming onto my channel, lecturing me about James 2 when I'm doing work and they're not. It's just, it's crazy. Now, I've digressed a bit there. I'm, I'm bringing it back. It, that's not simply reduced to a, just a matter of choice and just decisionism. Okay. That is not somebody just exercising a basic decision. That's somebody who, for one reason or another, is spiritually blind. Okay, that that is somebody who, for one reason or another, does not have ears to hear. Uh, they have a deep spiritual problem. Okay, that I can just show because they don't have a problem understanding that two plus two is four, but they have a problem understanding that it's by grace and not works for some reason. So, the bottom line is, when we tell a sinner to believe the gospel, we are asking them to make a decision that is contradictory to their nature. Okay, Jesus said men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. That, that's the default position of men. So, for a man to be born again and believe something or someone has to fundamentally change his nature. God has to remove his spiritual blindness, take the scales off his eyes, so to speak. Now, I can't sit here and say for every individual that ever lived why that happens with one person specifically and why it doesn't happen for another person specifically. The wind blows where it will. You can't tell from where it came or where it's going, okay? So, is there... So is everyone who is born again. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will harden who I will harden. Now, I'm sure a lot of you will have a lot of questions like why God chooses, and is it arbitrary, and what about those who go to hell, and so on. And as I said earlier, I can't answer all of these in one video, but let me end with this last sort of main point. There are some passages where the gospel was preached, and although they don't say free will, they use free will-esque language like 
whosoever will, or if thou wilt. If I'm giving the gospel, I wouldn't go into a discourse about predestination and election with unsaved people, unless they specifically asked me about it. Okay. Usually when Paul and or Jesus talk about these things, it's, it's predominantly to the disciples or with the saints, the brethren. So this series that I'm working on is more aimed towards my regular subscribers and viewers and people that already believe. It's not aimed to get people saved as a lot of my content is aimed at explaining, you know, gospel related things. So with you guys, I'm more inclined to talk about election and predestination and discuss this doctrine from that angle. But when I'm giving the gospel to somebody who hasn't got a clue about a Nazarite versus a Nazarene, I, I, I would present it more from the free will perspective, if you will, or all you have to do is. And that's often how, uh, if you've seen Brother James on my channel present the gospel, um, he'll say, if you want to, or I'm giving you the choice, but it has to come from you, it's between you and God. And, and I don't have a problem with him using that terminology and to the outside world. I think that that's a very helpful way to present, especially to somebody who has a works mindset and needs clear instructions. But among God's people, we have the spirit, okay, and we should be able to move on to the meat of the word and the more difficult subjects without getting wound up about it. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, and I'm sure they already know this, I, I don't agree with the way that Truth Speller and Destroying the Works of the Devil have, have done video after video after video against Greg Jackson and David Benjamin. I think they went a bit overboard with it, and it, it got very boring, frankly. But nobody's perfect. And at the same time, in their favour, though, I also don't appreciate the way that they will try to present some arguments from Scripture but then instead of tackling the arguments that they're presenting, Free Will Freddy's just slap this label Calvinist on them and then anathematize them as outsiders and heretics according to the label they've given them rather than addressing the scripture that they're presenting. Personally, I think that that's lazy. I think it's irresponsible with the scriptures. And it, frankly, it's not an argument for anything. It, it's no different than when the legalists call us antinomian or greasy graces or cheap grace for preaching grace it's like you're not addressing what i'm saying you're just slapping a label and then anathematizing the label now I, I do get i do understand that a lot of you have been hurt by calvinism i get that but remember that a broken clock is right twice a day and it doesn't mean that you'd get to dismiss everything that the sovereign graces have said just because it sounds a little bit like what calvinists believe because it doesn't really matter what calvinists believe okay to hell with what calvinists believe it, it matters what the bible says and what truth speller and destroying the works of the devil are saying it's, it's either right or it's wrong or it's at least maybe they've got a point okay now don't get me wrong you know calvinism itself is a works-based gospel it's lordship invented by navel gazing armchair theologians who were just basically diet catholics and they just use the most complicated language to explain the most basic things no wonder people get confused by it but that doesn't mean that everything that they say is necessarily wrong just because you were hurt by it okay because you know it's same with arminians you know if you're free will leaning well the arminians believe in free will but you don't believe you can lose your salvation right so just because there's some stuff that they might get right doesn't mean that everything is is wrong so that's all i'd really say on that you know calling somebody calvinist is not an argument and i hope um you know when we can resolve these issues sort of with the scriptures um and hopefully as i do more explanations on some of these topics you, you'll get a bit more of a picture as to where i actually fit on this scale and what i believe about these topics and hopefully i can actually dismantle some of the silly arguments that actually make no sense in the first place that people are even arguing about so um we'll we'll see where we go with that